Let's take a look at creating the base feature in a sheet metal part in SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. I am obviously starting in SOLIDWORKS and I want to start off by creating a brand new part to show you that when you create a part in SOLIDWORKS, you're just creating a part. There's no distinction between a sheet metal part and a solid part or some other different kind of part. And I'll point that out later in Creo Parametric. Let's click the OK button. And I've got my part started. I know that I am going to need to sketch in a moment. Let me turn on the display of some datum planes real quick. And I'm right now on the sheet metal tab because I was just previously on it. Normally you start out on the feature tab, but you have a sheet metal tab. If it's not active, you can make the sheet metal tab visible. And you'll notice that most of the icons are grayed out because in sheet metal mode, you need to have a base feature, some kind of wall in your model before you can do a lot of the different standard sheet metal operations. And you'll notice that you can create a swept flange. That's one way of creating a brand new wall. But the main way is by using the base flange slash tab command. I will click on it. And this is a feature that requires a sketch. Right now I'm being prompted to select a plane on which to sketch the feature cross section. I will select the plane called front. All right, so that is good for my sketch. And this is an open sketch. It does not form a loop. So when I hit the exit sketch button, now I'm getting a preview of the feature. Let me grab the arrow. Oops, didn't grab it. Let me grab this arrow and drag out the depth of this feature so that it is big enough for you to see. And so in this particular case, I am getting essentially an extrude of the sketch that was created. And if you would take a look at the manager over on the left, here's a checkbox where we can use the material sheet metal parameters. You can define a direction in, or depth in direction one and direction two. So right now in direction one, I can change this to a value of 200. If we want to have a second depth, we can enter in a value for that. Alternatively, if you didn't have a second direction, if you go to the drop down list, you can have this go up to a reference or offset from some other reference, or you could use the mid plane option so that you get half of the depth on each side of the sketch plane. Here you have for sheet metal gauges, you could use a gauge table. Otherwise, right here, we are entering a value for the sheet metal thickness. We can crank that up just so that it's a little easier for you to see. And then we have the ability to define the bend radius. So again, I can crank that up so you can see how the bend radius is increasing. And there's a checkbox here to reverse the direction of the sheet metal depth. And then we have some information here about calculating bend allowance. And here's where you can specify a relief. This particular sketch, it doesn't have any relief in here, but you could use a relief ratio. And here we have a value of 0.5. So here's my first base flange. I'm going to hit the check mark. And then to make the screen easier to read, let me turn off some of these different planes. Now I'm going to take this sketch and I'm going to change it. If I expand the base flange, feature in the tree. Here we have sketch one. Let's click on the edit sketch icon. And I'm going to sketch in another line and let's just snap from here to the other vertex. And you'll notice that it ends up shaded because we have now created a closed loop. It is a closed sketch. Uh, the start points and the end points are the same. So now when I hit the exit sketch button, the shape of our base flange changes. If I now select the base flange and then click on edit feature, you'll notice that our panel of information is much different now. 
we do have this checkbox to override the default parameters. The thickness was determined by the original base feature I created, and that is now establishing the thickness in the model. For example, if I hit the check mark out of here, there is an equations folder, and we can see that we have the thickness being equal to five millimeters because it's now making that parameter equal to the initial thickness I specified for the original base flange. Let's once more edit this particular feature. And actually, I didn't mean to edit the feature. I wanted to edit the sketch. Let's select the sketch, edit sketch. And I'm going to select this entity and hit the delete key. Now we're back to an open sketch. The shading went away. Let me exit out of the sketch. And it reverts back to our extruded shape for the base flange. Also, if you take a look at the ribbon, we have all or almost all the different commands available to us now for creating additional sheet metal features. Now let's jump over to Creo Parametric and see how things are over there. All right, I am in Creo Parametric. I'm going to create a brand new part. And you'll notice that when we create a new part, we have different subtypes. And one of the subtypes is sheet metal. That's helpful for creating a brand new part. I'll click the OK button. Here we get into sheet metal mode. Let me turn on the display of some planes. And I'm going to start off by creating a sketch. Let's click on the plane called front. Let's get into sketch mode. Just so that I am using the same units as I was over in SolidWorks, let me go to my properties. Yeah, let me hit the change button. Let's go to millimeter newton seconds and set that and keep the values the same. All right, so now I have my sketch created. The two main ways of creating a first or primary wall in Creo Parametric is by using either the extrude command or the planar command. So for example, if I choose the extrude command, well, right now we are, we have, let me change to a more reasonable value for the thickness. And so there you can see a preview of the feature being created. We could specify the depth here. If I go to the dashboard, you can see that we have a drop down list where we can specify the depth as being symmetric, or we could change it to up to different references if we had them in the model. Here we have our thickness. You can flip the thickness to the inside and the outside. Let me keep it on the outside. Placement tab. The only thing that's listed here is the sketch, and you can break the relationship to the sketch from the options tab. This is another place where we can define the different depths. And you can have the bends added on sharp edges. You could turn that off if you want, but hey, that is not realistic. And right now it's using the thickness as the value of the bend radius. You could change it to two times the thickness, or you could specify a value manually uh, that you want to use. And that radius can be to the inside or the outside, or it could be driven by your sheet metal parameters. Here we have a bunch of options that are grayed out for this particular extrude because we don't have other geometry in the model. There's a bend allowance tab for defining these different bends in here. You have sort of similar options in SolidWorks. And then the properties tab, you can change the name of the feature. Let me hit the check mark to complete the feature. Just like before, I am going to edit the definition of the sketch and change it to be a closed sketch. So let's select those two locations and hit the check mark. And in this particular situation, because we use the extrude tool, we are always getting an extruded shape. You can say, hey, but this is not naturally capable of being flattened. Yeah, no problem. You could throw in rips later on, but in Creo Parametric, you either create an extrude or you create a planar shape. You choose the tool, and it doesn't depend on whether you're doing an open sketch or a closed sketch. So there are merits to both methods. Let me select this extrude, and I am going to delete it. 
Let's click the OK button. Let me bring back the visibility of this sketch so I can see it. And with that sketch still selected, I will go to the planar tool. And here's the method where if you have a closed sketch in SolidWorks, it will fill in with the thickness that you specify. Let me hit the check mark once again. And it's actually possible to use the same sketch for creating multiple different features within the part. I will just hit the check mark to hit uh, to create the feature. And so in that way, we are using Sketch 1 to create both a planar feature and an extruded feature. Essentially, we have two different primary walls. If you take a look down at the bottom of the screen, we actually have an indication of how many independent pieces that we have inside of our sheet metal part. And I just want to mention with Creo 7, there are some other additional options for creating sheet metal geometry. So for example, if I create a brand new part, and let's say I'm making a solid part, I'll click the OK button. And just to get some geometry in here real quick, I'm just going to sketch in a rectangle. And I think I'm in inches. So let's change these different dimensions to be a little more reasonable. I'm going to take this and I am going to extrude this. Just make a regular solid feature and that is fine for the depth. Now let's say that I have this first body here in the model. I can then actually create an extrude and select this surface in the model and let's go to create a rectangle and I'll make it about yay big. For the sake of this demonstration, I am not going to change the dimensions. I'm going to make a real thin thickness. Let's use a value of 0.06. But now I'm going to go to the body options and create this as a brand new body. So now I have two different bodies in the model. And I can select this second body and then right click and actually convert this to sheet metal. And so for the references, I need to pick a driving surface. For some reason, I feel like I should be picking the bottom surface and then hit the check mark. And so in this way, I've got one body in the model, which is a regular solid body. I've got another body in the model, which is a sheet metal body. And you'll notice right now I am on the sheet metal tab inside of here. Well, if I select this as the uh, default body, then I could go back to the model tab and then start creating other additional standard part mode features. So starting in Creo 7, there is the ability in order to have both sheet metal geometry and standard part mode geometry in the same part file. One other thing that I do want to show you, let's say that I start off with a brand new part and I have the subtype set to solid and then Let's create a thin walled feature. Let's sketch on this plane. And once again, I will just sketch in a simple rectangle. And let's and change these to more reasonable dimensions. Assuming that I am working in inches. And let's say that I extrude this to a very thin depth. And it doesn't have to be thin, but you know, helps be representative of actual sheet metal. Here I have a standard mode part. You could always say, hey, I just want to convert this to a sheet metal part. And for the references, once again, I need to pick the driving surface, then hit the check mark. So now I have a sheet metal part that was converted from a solid part. And I just want to make that distinction that with SolidWorks, there aren't these different part types. But in Creo, you do have solid parts and you do have sheet metal parts and you do have solid parts that can also contain sheet metal bodies. So there you have it, a little comparison of creating the base feature in SolidWorks and Creo Parametric. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.